Percy Jackson, you really have all the first chance. The real Percy Jackson knows how to get the party started. Play something 12-year-old Mr. Watchka would get down to. Here comes some dope 90s beats. Oh, snap! Tell me you don't have Coolio! What up, everybody? So glad you're here. It's Coolio with the flow back in your ear. Wait, 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 wait. What about something that 20-something-year-old Mr. Watts would be into? Uh... You must have been a sad 22-year-old. Um, this is Sigur Rós, okay? They're from Iceland. You can't understand anything they're saying. And it's kind of the best for when you live with your parents and they just don't understand you, and you fall asleep writing poetry that no one will understand, especially that cute girl who works at the movie theater down the street. Whatever, I like more than just this in my 20s. Play something upbeat from my 20s, Percy Jackson. Try this one on for size. All I do is be Yeah, this is my Jimmy Jam. That's right. I was his DJ when we were back performing bar mitzvahs. He was super supportive of my turtle, Naid. Percy Jackson, I didn't know you were friends with T-Pain. I'm so happy that I met you guys. <laughs> Anywho, today for Whoa, I want to read that. Hold on, Wasco. Don't you have a really funny and incredibly embarrassing story to tell? You told your students today. I think you should tell everyone else's students, too. It's, uh... Personal Brenda. <laughs> fine, fine. Is it okay with you if we just review a book first? Sure, but you know people on YouTube can just skip to the end of the video and hear the story, right? What? Nobody would ever do that. Uh... This week, we're reviewing one of my favorite books to do is read aloud in class. So all teachers out there, I highly recommend Fortunately, The Milk by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman, especially to my students, is known mostly for when we teach tone. Because a lot of his books, like Coraline, and The Graveyard Book, and his book of short stories called M is for Magic, stories are known for being pretty creepy and dark, a little twisted. I mean, go back and watch the video for, you know, The Graveyard Book, because I already recommended it, and there should be a link right here. Otherwise, it just looks like I'm doing the worst voguing ever. How embarrassing. Now, the reason why Fortunately the Milk is one of the best read-aloud books is because of its amazing illustrations. The book is illustrated by Scotty Young. And you know what? If I could draw like him, I'd be like the happiest boy in all the land. I could draw myself out of this two-bit town. Am I right? You're not. Keep it moving. Another reason why this is an amazing read-aloud book is because if you're one of those teachers like me who's a little too wacky for their own good, you know, a little, little, little too goofy, it gives you ample opportunity to use all types of silly voices because there's tons of ridiculous characters here. Let me not get ahead of myself. Basically, the story starts out with the father who, um, not gonna lie, I know that Neil Gaiman is a huge fan of Doctor Who and, uh, kind of reminds me of the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, with that scarf. You're not fooling anybody, Neil Gaiman. I'm on to you. And the dad is desperately trying to bring milk home to his son and daughter. When it takes him too long to get home, he's got this cockamamie story about what took him so long. So in the story, if you're one of those silly teachers, you can use voices for pirates, and aliens, and ponies, and monsters, and Professor Stegg, the dinosaur who time travels. Again, Doctor Who much? and vampires, and more aliens, and the kids really get a kick out of it. Is it the most amazing and genius story of all time? No. Is it really fun to read? Yeah, it's really fun to read. And, come on now, books with illustrations equals... So amazing. So teachers, definitely, if you teach elementary school all the way up until, I'd say, sixth grade, fortunately, no. Fantastic. Kids will be engaged from the beginning to the end. They will totally get married to the book. It's goofy, it's funny, it's drawn insanely well, and unless you're like a big party pooper, then uh, you should like it. Unless you're a party pooper. And then I recommend reading a dictionary. Or maybe a book about Mr. Tillman. 
So go to your library, command to get, fortunately, The Milk, one of the most fun books to read that I've read in the last few years. Okay, great. You're done. Yeah, I'm done, Brenda. I'm done. Now tell the greatest story of all time. Do I have to tell the story? Yes! So this morning, I'm lying in bed, comfortably, calmly, not a care in the world, and my alarm goes off. So I reach for my alarm clock, and uh, I don't get too much. Instead of feeling my phone, where my alarm is going off, I feel something fuzzy. Now, there's not really a lot of things in my apartment that are fuzzy. So, even half asleep, I'm like, this is a cat. Is it the little one, or is it the fat? feel around a little bit and I realize, eh, this is the fat one. Now, he's not supposed to be on my nightstand. So, politely, start kind of nudging him to get off. <sighs> now, my fiance used to work with animals. And she told me that there's a thing. Especially when you clean the animals, there's a certain spot that releases what's in their butt place. So... Feeling around, feeling around, and uh... He pooped on my face. Scrambled out of bed and I ran into the bathroom and scrubbed my face for about 40 minutes. So yeah. My name is Mr. Wasco. And my cat pooped on my face. Why would you tell people that? Gross. And nobody needs no more of that. Brenda, why did I have to tell that story? <laughs> I feel shame. Your face smells like poo. I poo poo. It's not that funny, Brenda. Stop laughing at me, Brenda! I'm gonna get him to poop on your face next. You don't even have legs. You can't run away. Stop laughing!